Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'll show you how to create a self-shading brush in Procreate. Before we begin, let me tell you where you can find additional Procreate training. I have hundreds of classes at Skillshare, including some Procreate classes, and there's a coupon in the description below which includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and generally mine's better. If you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine, which include Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom, and Procreate training. So let's switch back here to Procreate. I'm going to show you first of all what I mean about the self-shading brush. I have the brush already selected here and a green color, and so I'm just going to write out a word using it. Now this brush has the shading built into it, so whatever you draw, it automatically brings shading with it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's just undo that. It's a mono line brush, but it doesn't have to be a mono line brush. You can actually put some tapering into this brush, but we're gonna start by making the brush. So first of all, I'm gonna go and get black because brushes are generally made in black. And I'm gonna go and find a mono line brush. So let me just go down to my inking brushes. I have a mono line here with streamline. Basically, you just want something that you can draw a big circle with. So I'm gonna draw out a circle. I'm not really worried too much about the fact that the line is really small. I'm just gonna hold the end of the line until I get the edit shape option appearing. And I want this to be a circle, so I'll just make it a circle. And now I'll tap in the middle of it and just drag it around. I just want to place it a little bit more centrally. Now, if I want to shrink it, I can just tap and drag on one of the outside lines. So tap and drag in the middle to move it and tap and drag on the lines to resize it. So I probably want it to be about that big. Now I'll drag the color into it. So I'm gonna drag the black color into it and fill up my circle. Next up, I want another circle. So I'm gonna add a new layer for this simply because that will allow me to edit this new circle without having to sort of keep it away from the other one. So brand new layer. Now for this, I'm gonna choose a pale gray. And this is going to be the gray that we're going to use for the shading. Now, as I said, brushes are generally made black. This one is one that's made black and gray. So let's go and create another circle here. I'm just hovering over the end, just making sure my Apple Pencil stays on the shape until I see the ellipse created at the top. When I let go, it says Edit Shape. So I'm gonna tap on here, I'm going to tap on Circle, so I make sure that it's a circle. I'm just gonna move it into position. I want it to be alongside this black shape. And I'll drag the gray color into it. Now, what I'm gonna do is put the gray circle underneath the black one so that the black circle is the main shape, the gray circle is the lesser shape. I also think it's probably a bit dark. So let me turn alpha lock on and I'm gonna pick up a lighter gray. So I have some grays up here. I think this lighter gray is better and so I'll drag it into my circle. This shape is now what I need for my brush. So what I'll do is go across here to the spanner icon, which opens up the actions palette. I'm going to add, and I'm going down here to copy canvas, and that copies the entire canvas. You don't wanna hit copy, you need to hit copy canvas. Okay, let's go back into the brushes. Now these are my inking brushes. I have some others, so let me just go and put these with the others. I'll put them into the HB mono line. So this is where this new brush will go. You just need to locate a place where the brush is going to be stored. You can move it around, but it's probably better to create it where you want it to be. I'll tap the plus symbol to open up the brush dialog, and this is where I start setting up my brush. Well, the first thing I need to do is to paste the image that I have on the clipboard in as my shape. So in the shape area, I'm just going to press and hold with my pencil until the word paste appears. Then I'll tap the word paste and the shape appears inside the box. Then we'll go and get the grain. And for the grain source, we're going to choose swap from Pro Library. So I'll tap on that and then we'll go and get the blank one. On my screen, that's going to be black. If you've got a black interface, so if you're working in the really dark interface of Procreate, then that would be white. Now, having a look in the box at the top, you can see that there's a real problem with the shape. And so what I'm gonna do is go up and tap Invert Shape in the Shape area. 
that's going to make it almost impossible to see the grey and that's just fine. In fact, that's telling us that the grey is probably too thick. I think it's too intense still. So what I'm going to do is just while I'm here is just go and fix that. So here is my grey. I'm going to walk it closer to 255, 255, 255, which would be white. So I'm going to go to 225 on each of these colours, R, G and B. Sometimes it's a bit easier to see exactly where you are in terms of a grey by actually looking at the colour numbers. And 255, 255, 255 is the largest that you can get. That's pure white. And so we want it to be a little bit less than pure white, but not as far back as it was. So let me just go back and make sure I'm on this layer. Alpha lock is turned on and so now I can bring the grey into it. I think that's going to be a better result. Let me go and again choose copy canvas. Since you're going to be using this brush for a long time, it's worthwhile setting it up properly to start off with. So I need to replace this. So I'm going to tap in here and tap paste. And so this is a better result. You practically don't want to be able to see that pale grey at all. But when you tap invert shape, you'll see it. But when you have it so that the main part of the brush is white, you pretty much don't want to see the grey bit at all because in the top box, you can see clearly that it's got a shadow on it. It's working just fine. It's just that you don't want it to be too intense. So at this point, let's go back and let's turn off these two layers and let's add another layer into the document. So we're going to test the brush out here. Of course, we're going to need to choose another color because that pale gray, that almost white color is not going to be good enough. So I'm just trying it out here. Now there are a couple of things wrong with this and one is that it's got no streamline on it. And if I'm going to use it as a sort of writing brush, then I want streamline. So I'm going first to the stroke area here. I'm going to wind back the spacing so it's a little bit smoother. However, if you wind the spacing all the way back, you're going to lose your shading. So just be aware of that. For this brush, you are going to need some spacing. And the less of the spacing, the more intense that shading is. So you reduce the spacing, the shading becomes more and more intense because effectively you're going over and over it with a really pale color. And if you do that often enough, you're going to tend towards getting your full strength color. So I've got my spacing set at 12, 12 and a half. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that in terms of spacing. To make it smoother, of course, we're going to add streamline to it. So I'm just going to take that up to max. So now it's writing a little bit better. But can you see that the shading is pretty much under the brush and not to its right? So what I would like is the shading to be to the right, not so much just underneath the brush. So let's see how we're going to deal with that. I go back into the brush and I'm going back into the source. And what I'm going to do is rotate the source. So I do that with two fingers and with a lot of luck because it can be a bit fiddly. But what I'm going to do is just rotate it around a quarter turn. So that's what it's supposed to look like. And now the shading is on the right hand side rather than underneath the brush. And so you want to make sure that you have the correct option selected so that your brush actually looks white. You don't want it to look like this or it's going to paint wrong. So make sure that you tap invert shape so that your brush is white and so you can practically not see either the shading or the shading in the shape source area either. So now let's have a look at this. See how much better that is that now the shading is appearing on the right of the main line and not underneath it. So any jitters that you see in this brush are because my pencil is skipping on my screen a bit. It's The screen is a little bit difficult to write on here, but that's my screen problem, not the brush problem. And so that's as easy as it is to create a monoline self-shading brush. Now, if you want it to be tapered, this is what we're going to do. Firstly, let's go and name the brush. So I'm going to call it a self shader. Now, what I like to do is to put my initials at the front. And that tells me that it's my brush. I made this brush. And so out of all of the brushes in my collection, I can see really quickly and really easily which ones are mine and which are potentially either the ones that were shipped with Procreate or ones that I've got from somebody else. 
So with my self shader, I'm going to duplicate it because I don't want to lose the existing self shader, but I do want to make this a tapered brush. So let's do this and let's change its name to dash taper. Okay, now we're going to see the changes we'll make. So we'll go into the stroke first of all, and we want to go to pressure taper and we also want to go to touch taper. So what I'm going to do on pressure taper is bring the beginning and ends in a little bit. And on touch taper, that's the taper that you would get if you were using your finger rather than the Apple Pencil. If you want a taper there, you're also going to bring the taper in. That's had no effect on the brush yet because we don't have anything attached to the taper. So I'm going to apply size to both of those. You can see that now we're seeing that the brush is changing a little bit. It's got this tapering on the end. There are some other options that you can use. In the general area, you can click on classic taper and that might give you a better result. You'll need to test it and see if it suits you, but certainly classic taper might give you a better result. My pencil again is still skipping a little bit on the screen. The other thing that you can do is go into the pencil options. And in the pencil options in the size thing at the very top here, you can adjust that because that's going to adjust how the size varies according to the pressure that you're using with the pencil. Now, this is not your finger. This is the Apple Pencil. So if I can just get the pencil to stick to the screen, you can see that I'm getting a tapered brush. So we now have two self shaders just made out of the same brush shape. We've got one that's got a taper on it and one that does not. It's a monoline brush. You can switch between them by just selecting the one that you want and just write with it. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video tutorial learning how to make a custom brush in Procreate that you can use every day. And there's a certain amount of excitement, I think, in making your own brushes in Procreate. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about this. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, press that notification bell. You know the routine. This will make sure that you see my new videos as they're released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.